Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reed, and I'm a naturopathic doctor, and this is a video about mycoplasma. Uh, someone posted on one of my previous videos a question about uh, what are the treatment approaches that I use with addressing mycoplasma, and it's a great question, a uh, really important topic to be um, aware of. Uh, a lot of uh, attention is placed on chronic manifestations of Borrelia burgdorferi, sometimes known as chronic Lyme disease, and Bartonella, and Babesia, and folks certainly do talk about mycoplasma, but I wouldn't say it gets quite as much limelight, forgive the pun, as Lyme and, and other co-infections. Um, and in my experience, I've had a number of patients where mycoplasma really was the biggest piece of the puzzle for a patient um, getting, uh, addressing that was the biggest piece of the puzzle for a patient getting well. Um, and that was as evidenced by either, you know, having tested for a number of different microorganisms and mycoplasma was the only one that came up. We treated for the infection, the patient got better. Um, or we used uh, something called low-dose immunotherapy and the mycoplasma formula for that was what got the patient better. And which is very, very specific in that case. So um, the treatment approach that I use when it comes to addressing mycoplasma is, and, and just as a general caveat, uh, nothing I'm about to say should be construed as medical advice. This is just for informational purposes only. Please talk to your healthcare provider before making any treatment decisions for yourself. Um, but the approach that I take when it comes to addressing cases of mycoplasma are that I bring in herbs and other interventions to help kill off the mycoplasma. So often using herbal tinctures or other herbal combination preparations, including herbs like something called hutunia, isatis, uh, alcornia, cryptolepis, Japanese knotweed. So using herbs like like that in fairly robust dosages to help kill off the mycoplasma. Uh, sometimes depending on the other symptoms the patient's dealing with, how far away they live and various other factors, we might use intravenous ozone therapy or something called intravenous photobiomodulation to help facilitate the treatment of the patient. Um, and so we'll work with things like that to help kill off the infection. And then we'll also work with things to help immunomodulate. So one of the things I talk about a fair bit, and I'll mention it again now because it's important, is that that micro, microorganisms like mycoplasma and Lyme and Bartonella and Babesia and others, they create this immune system dysregulation where they essentially put the immune system into a pro-inflammatory mode and not into a microorganism killing mode, which is brilliant on the part of the microbe, because if you can tell the immune system just to create inflammation and not kill you, that's a pretty good strategy, but unfortunately it's not so good for the person's body that's having that uh, immune system dysregulation. So using different therapeutics to help get the immune system back into proper uh, fine form is really important. Um, so the way that we do that is, again, using herbs, and there's certain multitasking herbs, like say Chinese skullcap and Japanese knotweed, great antimicrobial herbs to help kill off mycoplasma, but they also help to immunomodulate. Intravenous ozone therapy helps to kill off the infection and it immunomodulates. Or we'll use very targeted immunotherapy like low-dose immunotherapy, which in this case would be the mycoplasma formula for low-dose immunotherapy. Um, the third and final aspect of treatment that's always really important to remember but not always talked about is that we do need to uh, heal the damage that's been caused by the mycoplasma. So I've had many patients where they've been treated with antimicrobials for a long time. They're you know, typically feeling at least somewhat better, but they're still you know, tired, depleted, lots of brain fog, that kind of thing. And quite frankly, their systems just haven't been healed. They, ha they haven't been replenished. They've been through this gauntlet and then just expected to their bodies just to heal on their own. And our bodies are designed to heal on their own. But after going through uh, a, you know, being quite frankly ravaged by mycoplasma or maybe sometimes multiple infections, uh, it can take quite a while for the body to get better on its own. So we can help it along with things like mitochondrial support and uh, detoxification support and things to help repair uh, challenges to the, to the nerves and the brain and, thing, and things like that. So uh, making sure that we're getting the right tissue healing in place and, and that's really specific to what types of symptoms the patient's having and Test, test results that we might uh, from test results from tests that we might run to figure things out and things to that effect. So I hope that this answered the question about mycoplasma. If there are other questions about mycoplasma or any other topic, uh, please feel free to post it in the comment section below. And uh, just a reminder that my um, overcoming chronic illness course, uh, the next uh, set of modules are going to be presented live this coming Saturday. Um, the course is going to be recorded, so if you can't attend it live, no problem at all. If you want more information about that. Please please 
uh, click the link in my link tree in my bio if you're watching this on Instagram or in the uh, I'll have it posted in the comment section uh, or somewhere anyways uh, that should be easily accessible uh, on YouTube or Facebook. So I hope that uh, this was in useful information for you and I will leave it there.